Hello everyone, a very warm welcome to you. It's uh, Friday chat time, didn't get a chance to do one of these last week, so apologies for that. Been extremely, extremely busy. Um, for those people that don't know, I, um, I used to work in banking. I now work in retail, which I perceive was less stressful. It's turning out to be that way uh, now, but um, unlike last year I was doing it, I'm more useful to the place and I seem to be doing a lot more hours, which is causing a bit of a struggle with fitting everything in the channel in, but with your support, I'm doing it. So hope you got a chance to see the live stream yesterday, which was great fun to do, as they always are. It was on a Thursday as opposed to a Tuesday, so I don't know what's going to happen week to week, but um, regardless, I will hope to still do at least one of those and put them in there. Our weather's getting a bit colder because it is December now, so wrap up warm. Unless you're in a hot country, then don't wrap up warm because then you'll be too warm. You know what I mean? I have to sort of like uh, uh, cover myself uh, here. So how are you doing in the run into um, Christmas? Is your job safe? Are you really super busy? I suppose the one advantage is if you're, you're super busy, well that's a bit of a pain, at least you've got safe work. One thing that I've learned from the pandemic is the two jobs that seem to be safe um, are like people always need food, so supermarket stuff and the service industry in that regard, and also the NHS, like nurses and staff uh, and uh, that sort of area. Anyway, I'm here to try and ease stress for you. We all come together as a community. It was really apparent in the live stream, so thank you for your support there, as I mentioned. Now, apart from that, of course, we uh, do uh, about six videos um, a week, so I'm keeping that going of various systems, mainly ZX Spectrum. So I'll do a quick rundown, as I always do, if you missed any of those, give you a chance to go back and have a look at them. Some as, as a, some are always better than others, but you know, I don't just cover the best games, we cover walks and all, so we've got more of a comparison. Quite often it's my first go playing the game, so I won't always know if it's good or bad beforehand, and I don't tend to read the instructions that much, so sometimes I struggle and you give me tips as well. Uh, it's a bit like in the live stream, you gave me some tips for the Rocky Horror Picture Show, and then I got a bit more knowledge there. Anyway, that's one of the games we reviewed. So last week we had uh, two ZX Spectrum games that we did on the Saturday. Uh, the first one was a vertical scroller shooter called Moonstrike. Um, very monochrome, as a lot of the ZX Spectrum games uh, tend to be. Uh, the ship is a bit big, it's a bit cumbersome, it's a bit slow, but it is of an era. It's all like, okay. Uh, I reviewed it with a cheat on it, a poke, and it's all like uh, messed up a little bit after stage two, but that might be just that I had uh, the poke on. Uh, other games in this ilk are Xevious and Terra Cresta, if you will. I think those two may be a slightly better, although Xevious I don't think was converted particularly well. So that was Moonstrike. Uh, the other game, which split the room because of the uh, music, which I quite liked, uh, the 48k version doesn't have the music, was the Rocky Horror Show, based on the original play by Richard O'Brien, which was later turned into a movie, which I still haven't seen, but it's all great fun. When it boils down to it, whether you watch the movie or not, this is a rather cool exploration game. You can control either one of two characters, Brad or Janet, and your other half has been turned into stone by Dr. Frankenfurter, the villain of the piece, and you must collect different parts of a demon juice machine to unturn them from stone back to normal, and it's scattered around the, the uh, castle. Um, you can have interactions with various characters there. One character, which happens to be on the live stream, robs you of all your clothes and then you do a weird walk for the rest of the game. Uh, while it tries to keep it to a PG level. Uh, great music in this, but some people didn't like it, so those people, they'd probably be better off with the 48k version uh, rather than the 128k. But the 128k plays um, the Time Warp, which, um, you know, is, is just like a classic tune, but if you don't like uh, musicals, you don't like that show, it might be a bit of a struggle, so go with the 48k version in that sort of case, and then it just boils down to an exploration game. There we go. The other ZX Spectrum game, always done on a Wednesday, is a homebrew, uh, based on Arkanoid. Yes, it's Arkanoid back to basic. It was created as a part of a basic programming competition, and they've done well, so there's no compilers or machine code here. And it's a bat and ball game, of course, based on Arkanoid. Um, so someone mentioned there, uh, the first stage at least, was very reminiscent of a stage in Arkanoid Return to Do, Do which was the um, sequel. Uh, slows down a lot in uh, multi-ball, one of the upgrades there, but that's to expect with basic as it's trying to draw each ball separately. Uh, but it, it's not a bad little effort and I'm glad to see it. Something you might have a look at on uh, a live stream as an opening game um, next week, but not spend absolutely ages on it. 
Ah, uh, on the Commodore Amiga, we've got a very average game called Zyconics. It's one of those shape uh, games where they go down the screen. Um, take it influenced probably mainly from Clax, but it's really less interesting than Clax. And the reason behind this is uh, your play area is too big, so there's not too much jeopardy, and it's way, way too easy to align three shapes in a row. It's got music, which is okay, probably the best bit of the game. Uh, but yeah, it, it, it's Dolesville. Zyconics are one to be avoided, um, falls in the category of puzzle games, of course, and other similar games of columns, and well, in particular on the ZX Spectrum Pillars, but that's a lot better. Go for Pillars on the Spectrum rather than Zyconics on the Amiga. Um, yeah, uh, one to avoid that, I would say. Uh, on the Atari 2600, uh, we looked at uh, chess, you know, an early game, video chess. Uh, what you see is what you get really. It's always very interesting to see how computers of different versions compete with chess. Uh, there was um, a Scion Chess uh, from Melbourne House on the Spectrum, which I played a bit as a kid where you can rearrange the pieces. This one's a bit more basic. You can't rearrange the pieces or set up different uh, boards and colours. It just does chess. And what it does is well. It's a good representation. There's different um, skill levels. So I have a look at me trying to take on chess. And it's on for 1978, this game. So it's one of the really, really old ones. And the last game was a modern game. Uh, come out on the PC in 2014. I thought it came out on the PlayStation 4 at that time as well, but I've li later corrected it's come out in 2018, so it's not quite as old as I thought. But a really great game. I've had it in the cellophane for two years. I didn't have enough time to play it. It's Wreckfest, a banger crasher demolition game. Now, the review is about half an hour, because I always get a bit carried away. But, you know, it's such a good game, I'll probably go back to it, maybe do um, uh, another half hour bid, maybe an hour bid, or somewhere in between just to get a bit more out of the thing. So that's Wreckfest. I know we're mainly into our retro stuff, but there you go. That's well worth a look as well. Now, I'm recording this before I go to work. Yeah, I know. Uh, so, you know, I'm rushing around the place like a nincompoop. So by the time you're watching this, I'll probably be still at work because I'm not finishing to about nine o'clock unless you're watching a bit later, and I'll be back then. And it's back on the bus again. Um, talking about uh, that, um, I've mentioned this in the live stream actually, I don't think I'm going to do it. Um, waiting for the, it only takes me about, I don't know, once the bus comes, it takes me about 12 minutes, 15 minutes to get into work. So it's only about maybe less, two and a half miles away. I did consider maybe getting like a, uh, a bike, but then there's nowhere to store the bike when I get up the other end. Then I had a look at maybe getting a uh, foldable bike. I don't know if any of you have got those and give me some uh, advice. But the thing that put me off is the wheels are really, really small. Now, I don't know with small wheels you have to put more effort in. But it's just if I go through a pothole with a small wheel, I'm going to get unbalanced. And it's not the kind of year you want to be driving a bike when it's like windy and rain and stuff. If you haven't been on a bike for a while, because um, on ice, people might knock me off. And also, when I was looking at a lot of these bikes on Amazon, it, I, I was looking around and I thought, that's okay, that's okay. And um, then it said it's just for a trail or mountain bike use. So there's very few r road bikes. Uh, also, I, I thought, can I change the tyres to, to slicks, like road tyres? Apparently, they're completely different things. They're not interchangeable because of the, the sizing from a, a mountain or a trail bike to a road bike. They've got different wheel sizes. So that makes it a bit complicated. So I'll probably just stay, I think, I'll probably just stay to um, uh, the bus, uh, really. Um, it would have saved time just getting on a bike and going, but I think it's a little bit dangerous. And if I fall off a bike, well, you know, uh, the channel might stop for a bit, but we don't want to do that. So I just stick with the bus. The bus is okay. I think I'd recoup the, the money spent on the bike within about six six months. But uh, again, uh, riding along, pouring with rain, on a bike with the wheels too small, with cars going past me and, and wind, um, yeah, best probably to play it safe. Now, do you have a, do you have a foldable bike? Um, let me know in the comment section below. Is it grim or is it okay once you get used to it? There are sort of like um, electric ones, I think, where it helps you go up here. You can turn those on, but then carrying it, I'd imagine, would be extra heavy and it might not fold down as much. And it's the maintenance of the thing. I'm not really the most technical people. Windows 10 is probably more technical than what I can handle. But I doubt that that's got that on the bike because I'll be on my bike and it will do an upgrade and then um, I'll get kicked off. Anyway, I don't think Windows 10 is on collapsible bikes. Is it? Okay, so I hope you are well. Strange times at the moment. Um, we're not in lockdown in the UK at least. I think in Austria, Germany, maybe some other parts of the world it is. It's because of this new variant, 
We're back to wearing masks, although I see in the supermarket some people are sneakily coming in not wearing them. Maybe they've got uh, medical excuses, I don't know, but it's not my job to ask. I'm just, I'm just the man on the checkout going bibbidi bibbidi bib. Um, it's the Omicron variant, isn't it? Now, uh, apparently it's got slightly different um, symptoms. I don't really know how serious it is. I read briefly an article, it might have been transferred from uh, animals. Who knows, there's a lot of misinformation online. Um, yeah, so if you get the symptoms, just uh, stay uh, safe. I haven't been affected by them um, myself. Even right at the beginning, about two years ago, when this all started, I got a little bit ill, but not enough to... I think I was off work a little bit, but only like the odd uh, day. I felt really tired, but I sort of recovered. So I think my body's fighting it off, but the different strains... It's a bit like the... Um, uh, the flu uh, jab, we have to keep getting it uh, each year, I suppose. I think this is going to keep happening on and on and on. But what we don't want, I, I do most of my Christmas shopping online, but what we don't want is another uh, lockdown. So how is it where you are? Are you uh, surviving okay? Or are things going a bit uh, weird? So yeah, the channel will keep going regardless. I am up against it uh, time-wise in the Christmas period. Uh, we're only just into December. Uh, last week was this like, well, last two weeks have been absolutely ridiculously crazy. I didn't have time to do this video uh, last week, but you know, I'll treat trying to find odd bits of hours so it can continue on. So, huge thank you to people who subscribed, uh, keeping the thing going. Uh, the super chats have been really, really helpful in the streams and the co fires as well to give me um, an avenue of where I'm going to go with it. When things settle down, I'll be able to look at the, the tech because we can sort of get the funds there to upgrade uh, a chunk of it now. So thank you there. Uh, thank you to the members, which I'll come to now. Uh, thank you on all tiers of making a huge effort month by month, especially those people that have been here uh, for a while. Uh, thank you there. If you're on the second tier and above, I'll give you a shout out, unless you don't want me to. If you don't want me to, let me know, but I'll shout out any sites that you're, you're dealing with as well, or you're doing or anything outside. So, big thank you this time round to, okay, thank you everyone. If you want to become a member, click on the join button. Uh, and it will tell you a bit more about it. It's not compulsory by any means, so don't feel pressured. This channel primarily is here to be stress regardless, okay? So don't don't feel pressured in any way. So thank you. So big thank you this time to Grey Hulk 2. Thank you for your continued support of Grey Hulk 2. Um, hopefully in the new year we'll be doing a bit more Commodore 64 stuff here and there uh, as we've like picked up, so thank you. Uh, big thanks to Dave B 73 Dogs. Uh, huge, huge thank you, uh, dogs, for your, um, um, your, your your super chats in the in the last few streams. Really, really appreciated. Thank you, man. Big help, big help. Uh, big thank you as well to Obed Brinkman. Now, if you haven't done already, check out Obed's um, uh, site there on the Instagram. It's instagram.com slash obatphotography. That's instagram.com slash obatphotography. Obat is uh, a skilled photographer. Um, I, I look on this, this site every now and again, he did a great picture of the moon which I was looking at, it's a close up of flowers, he's got a selfie pic there as well, <laughs> yeah, it's, there's, a lot of, there's, a lot of, there's a lot of good uh, uh, stuff in there, uh, skilled photographers, so have, have a look at that, show some of those photos, some love if you're on Instagram, or just, just have a look at it, anyway, it's instagram.com slash obat photography, keep up the super shots, um, obed. Hooray! And thank, thank you for joining the, the streams as well. I'll see you in there quite often. Thank you, Obed. Have a good weekend. Um, also, huge thank you to Pete James. And now one of the best names on YouTube you can ever, ever get is Jason Arnott's Terrifying House of Obsessions. Uh, thank you, Jason. Jason runs his own YouTube channel as well. And thank you, Jason, for um, on Twitter um, uh, tweeting... Uh, um, about the stream as well when I was playing Oh Mummy 2021. Thank you, uh, Jason. It all, it all helps to spread uh, the word. Uh, massive thank you to GTB Films. Thank you, sir. Uh, David Harakawa, who um, on Twitter as well um, quite often puts up pictures of uh, car models that he's putting together. Always really, really good, really good uh, pictures. So thank you, David. Uh, M. Barrett, thank you for your game suggestions. A Ratty, a Mallard One, thank you, everyone. Arsone 1255, uh, thank you for joining uh, the stream, seeing you in a few times. Uh, Alf Fairweather, thanks Alf, and thank you to uh, Alf's cat, was it Poppy? Was it called Poppy? I'm not sure, I might remember that wrong, thank you. But thank you to Alf Fairweather, uh, Torque Marder, thank you, uh, Jason Smith, uh, Nikki S, thank you, so there's a few of you now, isn't there? Claire Johnson, thank you to Watho Snorkers, John Roby and Jeffrey Searby. 
Uh, thank you, thank you, thank you. A big thanks to Steve and Norman. Now, we know about Steve Norman, don't we? Don't you? You do know about him. He runs a blog called RetroArcadia.blog, which is going uh, a little way uh, now. Really, really skilled, really, really attractive uh, blog. Most recently, he's looked at Splatterhouse 2 on the uh, Mega Drive. Uh, he looked at that because he was going through... Um, uh, a binge of watching the Friday the 13th uh, movies. Uh, I think a few people might get injured in those movies. But anyway, and that was a direct influence for Splatterhouse 2 on the Mega Drive. So have a look at that, his views on that. Also took a look at, uh, on the Nintendo Switch, a game called Clockwork Aquero. Which is a game I don't know too much um, about, but it's very Japanese-y in style. As usual, Steve always does a look back in the week of games he's played uh, as well, so keep up with uh, uh, those. I think last week I didn't get a chance to do uh, this uh, blog, as I mentioned, but uh, Steve also looked at the Pit Fighter Arcade, which is, I think it was okay in the arcades, but the conversions, particularly the Spectrum and, and the Mega, weren't particularly good. It's photorealism, probably influenced by the Mortal Kombat series. So have a look at that, retroarcadia.blog. Uh, there you go, you'll be a fool to miss it, because Steve does some great, 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 great work. Now, where did I get up to? I always lose my place. Yes, big thank you to Lemmy uh, um, um, uh, Barnett. Thank you uh, there. Uh, there we go, where are we now? Thank you. Uh, big thanks to Steve Q. Thank you for your help throughout the year, Steve. Much, much appreciated. Thank you very much. You made a lot of things uh, possible and ease my stress as well. So thank you, Steve. Hope you're doing well. A uh, huge thanks to uh, Phil Hill, uh, the amazing Chono Baggy. Thank you, uh, Chono. I'm glad you liked that uh, Wreckfest video. Hopefully we can uh, get back and do... Um, We'll, we'll, we'll do one. We'll, we'll do a, an additional one as well, getting further into the game. If that's popular, then I might do another one. That's how it works. Uh, but a big thank you to uh, Jason Holmes as well. There we go. Now, seven of you are on the upper tier, so thank you. You've gone above and uh, beyond. This is when it's really helping the channel now, so uh, thank you. A uh, big thank you to Rossi Bossy. Now, I mentioned Rossi a lot of times, and deservedly as well. Uh, check out his itch site, a very talented coder, rosbossy.itch.io. That's rosbossy.itch.io. Uh, working on a game at the moment called Xevious, which is a shooter, so much better than Moonstrike on the ZX Spectrum, and Terra Cresta as well. Uh, really coming to, uh, together well. Uh, it's got a few projects underway, uh, Super Pixel, no, Super 3D Pixel Grand Prix as well, which we'll come back to. Uh, there's a game on there you can download today if you want to, getting into the Christmas spirit called, uh, I think it's called Christmas Scramble or Santa's Christmas Scramble. We will be reviewing that uh, nearer the time at Christmas as well because I didn't get a time chance uh, last year. So have a look at that. I'm sure in the new year, uh, uh, Rossi will start other projects as well as a creative person tends to do and ones will be finished here and there. So well done, Rossi. Uh, someone to keep your eye on. Uh, not because he's a troublemaker, but because he's a good coder. So thank you, Rossi. Huge thank you to... <laughs> so, I, know, I, I, I never know what I'm going to say. It's unscripted. Huge thank you to Colin Hode. Thank you, Colin. Uh, thanks for all your help uh, as well. Really appreciated. Martin R, likewise. I know you watch the stream sometimes afterwards. Thank you for your support. Uh, also, um, thank you, thank you, thank you. A uh, big thank you to uh, Richard Mitten. Um, great stuff. Hope you're well, sir. And uh, Tom. Uh, Graham Vebke, my friend in Australia. Hope all is good as we go into the festive uh, part of the year, uh, Graham. And also, massive, massive thanks to Jules goes a bit above and beyond uh, retweeting videos, uh, doing vid caps uh, quite often on the stream after they've uh, gone up. Uh, Julie also, Jules also runs a site as well. She runs a number of sites, uh, but do check this one out as well. This is from a note I took last week. It's mygamingmemories.weebly.com. It's mygamingmemories.weebly.com. Have a look at Cartoon Capers. We can do slash Cartoon Capers. Um, updated every now and again. Well, quite regularly, really. Uh, most recent updates. There might be a few more since I've written this down. But on the Game Boy uh, Color, looking at cartoon-based games. We've got Wacky Racers, which is an awesome cartoon. Uh, with Penelope Pitstop and Dick Dastardly and Muttley. Good, good cartoon. We'll see what the game's like. Uh, it's got Tom and Jerry, uh, Jules has had a look at, and Casper, based on that film, The Friendly Ghost. So it says those ones are pretty good. Uh, there's a couple of games that aren't really that good. Um, uh, Mickey's Racing Adventure 
and Buzz Lightyear. Sometimes these tie-ins aren't quite as good as others because they know they're going to sell um, anyway. So have a look at that, mygamingmemories.wheelie.com. Uh, have a wander around the site, quite a feast of information there. Uh, as I say, uh, good fun to have a look at, bit of a nostalgia buzz. So so thank you everyone. Uh, let's do those shout-outs, as I say. If you want to want to shout out, if you want to go to the second tier and above, click on that join button and I'll see what I can do for you. I'm happy to do it. So, enjoy the rest of the week. Have a good Friday evening. Have a great weekend. Um, the members will know what videos are going up uh, tomorrow and Sunday. Uh, we'll, do an, we'll do another members video on Sunday, letting you know the uh, games after, well, next week as well. Uh, a couple of ZX Spectrum games on the Saturdays we tend to do. Um, take care of yourself. Wrap up warm, as I say, unless it's boiling where you are already, then don't do that. Ah, stay safe. Don't slip over. And... You know, there's an Omicron virus around, but don't get too worried about that. I don't know how, how, how big it is. Just be sensible, wear your mask if need be. So, till next time, thanks for watching this as well. Appreciate it. Beating stress we go. It's a continuing battle, and we'll continue battling, and we'll win continuously, I'm sure, whilst we pull together. So, till next time, take great care of yourself, and a very fond goodbye. Goodbye. Goodbye, E. And Jenkins.